Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. We continue our coverage of the sport coast-to-coast, border-to-border, and all those ships at sea. Well, this time the Nike hot seat needs a, well, it needs a uh, resident. We've got a good one. Matt Dernland, the head coach of the Binghamton University Bearcats, joins us from his office. Matt, how are you? I'm doing great, Scott. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Four years now as you, well, begin your fourth year at Binghamton, and the evolution there continues. How goes the uh, the program? How is it looking for the fall? It's going good. We're, we're excited. We've got a young nucleus of guys that are talented, but um, we're looking forward to next week to uh, start getting them battle tested. We'll talk a little bit about some of those guys. We'll talk about some of those guys. We'll talk about the conference uh, and uh, facilities and all that. But I do want to talk to you first about your coaching staff. There have been some changes there, and and I think uh, uh, really, really good changes. You've got some strong guys in there with some uh, incredible wrestling pedigrees, much like your own. Can you talk about your staff? Yeah, we're really excited about our staff. You know, uh, Most notably, we had uh, added Kyle Borshoff uh, the, uh, late this spring uh, to the staff. So obviously, you know, Kyle's wrestling background speaks for itself. You know, he was a two-time All-American at American University, but more notably than that to, to me uh, is his, you know, his proven coach, coaching record at American University, helping lead that program to a top five finish, as well as uh, leading several All-Americans to, to the podium. So it's one thing knowing how to do it yourself as an athlete, but you know, the thing that excited me about Kyle was he's proven as a coach that he knows what it takes to lead guys to the podium. So that's a huge addition, you know, for, just from a coaching stand, standpoint, but also from a ge- geographic standpoint. Uh, having Kyle being from Rochester and his deep connections with the New York wrestling community um, just adds to our arsenal as far as uh, going out and getting the best recruits in New York. Well, in New York, indeed, Binghamton, of course, uh, was a number of years ago when it was challenged as to whether or not it would be in existence and the fight was on. You've got some uh, outstanding support from, uh, well, from the athletic department and outside the athletic community as well. And I know they're looking for victories, as, uh, but I think a greater view, perhaps, is uh, the quality of the education that, that kids are getting there and the kind of kids you guys are producing as young adults. Can you talk about the end result? Sure. I mean, that was one of the most a- attractive pieces for me taking this position was, number one, I knew at the, at the back end, you know, after four or five years in our program, these individuals were going to ha- get a world-class education and have the opportunity to really direct their life for the next 40 or 50 years just based on the quality of degree that they're getting here at Binghamton University. So, you know, sometimes we've got to keep that in perspective. I think we, a lot of times we, we look at wrestling and this is the most important thing. But, you know, at the end of the year, at the end of four or five years, not many guys go into pro wrestling, you know. So they got to uh, become a professional in something, something else um, outside of our sport. So it's exciting you know, that we have a world-class education, you know, one of the best public schools in the entire country. Um, and we know if we can attract the, these kids here that they're going to have, you know, wonderful opportunities for years to come after getting a degree here at Binghamton. Matt, you've been away from Ohio as a student athlete and a coach uh, for a while. Let's, let's talk about that time you spent at St. Paris Graham High School. It was uh, uh, three years there and, and then on as an assistant at Ohio Northern. Can you can you talk about your roots in coaching? Because what I've seen, that's my perspective, mind you, I've seen you advance and grow as a coach. Um, again, not so worried about the immediacy, but the long-term effect uh, a good quality coach and good quality coaching can have on a young man. Yeah, you know what, Scott? I've been, I've been really blessed throughout my wrestling career, not only as an athlete, but as a coach to have really strong mentors helping guide me and lead me along the way, um, starting off at St. Paris Graham um, with Ron McCunn, um, who's recently passed, but also now the current head coach, Jeff Jordan, obviously has established St. Paris Graham as one of the premier, if not the premier uh, program in the country, and, and Jeff has definitely established himself, in my mind, as the number one high school coach in the country. But to have Jeff not only serve in a dual capacity for me, not only is he one of my one of my best friends, but also he really provided a, a, a strong foundation for what my coaching philosophy is, you know, and obviously, you know, 
on the mat, we want to produce the best athletes we possibly can, right. um, win state titles, win NCAA titles, win world titles, but also, you know, the way we conduct ourselves, you know, and how you're going to become a man and how you, you know, treat the sport w- with respect. You know, it's critical that, you know, the end product here for us is, you know, to create a well-rounded individual, you know, that, you know, he can be a proud of, he's a good representative to his family, his university, his athletic department, and most notably, you know, Binghamton Wrestling. So everybody that I've gone through, you know, in my years at Penn State, I was really fortunate enough to uh, have daily meet- meetings with Rich Lorenzo, um, who's, you know, the godfather of Penn State Wrestling, and he had a profound impact on me, you know, um, on a daily basis during my tenure at Penn State, just picking his brain, you know, gleaning wisdom from him. And uh, he was just a great sounding board and a great mentor to me. Um, also, I've been had a privilege at Ohio Northern University with Ron Beachler, and Ron's had a wonderful program at Ohio Northern, had produced tremendous athletes there, but he's also had, you know, a, a huge impact on the leadership of our sport from his time with, you know, the NCAA Rules Committee and the N- NWCA. So I've been, you know, I've had an embarrassment of Richards as far as, you know, having really strong mentors, you know, guide me and form and shape what my philosophy and vision as a head coach is and what it uh, continues to be. You know, what it's, and, and, and all of that I think is exactly what I was looking for in a response from you, but I go back a little bit further to find out the underpinnings and the underpinnings started uh, when I started following you and I was fortunate enough to see some not all but some of your your high school career you 154 and 4 those are hard to come by and uh, being an undefeated Ohio State champ from 89 to 91 you know you look at those kind of accomplishments in a state that is so deep in the sport and and has such uh, history um, you know, what you accomplished as an athlete, uh, it was phenomenal. Is it, is it, I, I can't believe that it's easy to be able to translate that into, um, maybe an element of your coaching philosophy, but being a winner yourself and, and saying, Hey, let's look at some old footage. <laughs> That's not the way it goes, is it? No, no. But again, I, I reference it's, you know, I had a, you know, I was in a very fortunate situation. Referencing back to the Jordan family, you know, my family they kind of helped pull us in into wrestling. So, you know, growing up, you know, I got to to see Jim and Jeff win four state titles, and so, you know, I put that in my memory bank at a young age. I got to see my two older brothers, you know, win two state titles. So just from, you know. Uh, it gave me a confidence seeing those guys. I saw what the work they did, you know, and, you know, how that translated into them um, winning state titles. And I was probably naive enough to think, well, if they can do it, I can do it, and I should just go out and win state titles. But <laughs> there, there's a, a lot more that went into that, but a big credit to that goes into my dad, you know, as well. He was he was my coach, you know, growing up. He's the one that pushed me. He's the one that drove me to, to really uh, – believe that I could accomplish some great things at the high school level. So a big credit goes goes to him. I think that's cool, dude. And and uh, when it all comes down to it, man, our, our fathers are so very, very important into the men that we become. Uh, you spent, of course, uh, a tremendous amount of time with the Nittany Lion program. You mentioned Coach Lorenzo. Uh, for I don't I, th- I don't know that you intentionally left Ira out, but there was some tremendous people in the world of business while at Penn State that you had the opportunity to witness, to be around, to see how they worked, uh, what drove them, what kind of passion they lived their life with. Um, Penn State was a good place for you, uh, and then others started calling. Uh, let's I mean when Clarion called, you answered that phone. You thought about it. You weighed out the possibilities, and and uh, you made that decision to go to Clare, and then of course Binghamton. I think that that's just been a tremendous stepping. You know, and I, I'm not calling Clarion a stepping stone. What I'm saying about this is that every step has been calculated, uh, and it's been, I think, great career moves. Do you feel the same way? I do. I was really fortunate uh, with my time at Penn State. You know, I've got a great memories there. You know. Most of my kids were born in State College, Um, so it's got a very special place in in my heart. Obviously, what we were able to accomplish um, as a staff there um, with Troy Sunderland and with Cale Sanderson 
was very special and uh, very formative in my coaching development. There you go. Uh, to have that uh, experience with both those head coaches and to, to learn from them and uh, do some special things, winning a team trophy with Troy and then winning a national title with Kale were very special things to me. And it really, you know, what it did was really uh, conceptualize, you know, how you actually go from thinking about and preaching about winning national titles to make actually making that translation in a tangible form to saying, yeah, I have the confidence of knowing what it takes, you know, to help contribute to kids winning individual national titles and contributing from a staff sense on what it takes to win a team title. And so you know, that's, you know, was not only formative, but gave me the confidence when I, I finally decided to, when the opportunity came to, to go to Clarion and have that confidence, like, yeah, I've got in a really tangible sense, I know what it takes to, to help try and build a team. And we did something special my year at, at Clarion, um, helping lead that program back into the top 20 for the first time in 15 years. Um, I take a lot of pride in that, you know, and, you know, because there's a big responsibility in that job at Clarion with um, most notably with Coach Bub, you know, and what he established at Clarion. And so to be, be able to help reconnect that program to its tradition, I, we took Troy Letters and I take a lot of pride in that, what we were able to accomplish there. And that was a, a really special year. And then when this opportunity at Binghamton came up, I think um, what this university pr provides you know, not only from an athletic sense and what their vision is for the program, but most notably from an academic sense. You know, those were really uh, strong connecting points that really drew me up here. And also just uh, the state of New York itself. I really thought, you know, with its um, strong history of scholastic wrestling that I thought if we really came up here and as a staff we were able to get the best kids from the state of New York to stay in the state of New York, um, not only could we be one of the most prominent teams in the country, but you know, hope hopefully in the next couple of years start challenging that uh, big red team up north from us. That's a big challenge indeed. By the way, uh, we go back. I'm 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 glad you didn't let Joe Bastardi hold you back at Penn State. Uh, as active as he is in the wrestling room and and weight training, uh, that guy can be one tough weather forecaster. I'll tell you that right now. He can. He's probably uh, he's probably laughing at my puny biceps right now and telling me to get back on his weight program. <laughs> I got uh, an email from him this morning telling me the University of Iowa versus Oklahoma State meet scheduled to wrestle outside in front of 28,000 fans. He said uh, estimated temperature five degrees below normal. No kidding. <laughs> I tell you what, he's pretty pretty on the money, so I would probably uh, – Break your heaters out for that one oh, out there I, in Iowa. I think they're going to be doing that no matter what Joe says. But I'll tell you what, Joe is generally right on the money. Let's fast forward to 2014-2015 season. You guys won nine dual matches and uh, produced a pair of NCAA championship qualifiers. How special has been that build? And talk about the 2014-2015 season. Can we go back? Sorry, Scott, I'm losing you here. Oh, sure, this, uh, sure. I just want to yeah, fast yeah. forward. Can we fast forward to the 2014-2015 season? Sure. All right. You won nine dual matches, a pair of NCAA championship qualifiers. Uh, perhaps you can start with Tyler. I tell you what, man, Tyler's going to be one of my special coaching memories when I get out of the sport. Um, from where he came from, um, when I took over here three years ago to what he turned into, I believe his freshman year, he won one varsity match um, at the NCAA level. And for him to go and progress to becoming our first EIWA champion, um, becoming a top 15 heavyweight in the country, I couldn't be more proud of what, what he accomplished and um, where he grew in his time with us. Um, so, yeah, so Tyler was a probably the highlight of the year, you know, establishing what we can do in our new conference in the EIWA, but also, you know, hopefully, you know, that will trickle down to our young guys. Um, our biggest challenge here since I got here, you know, the goal and the intent as soon as I got here was to create a st sustainable model where we can get to the point where you can replicate results year after year after year. And that's a tough thing to do because 
in trying to establish uh, that bar and that sustainable model, you've got to do it with the right types of kids that you're going to get four or five years of production out of and not just you know a turn and burn model where you're trying to take a, a risk on a kid or take a chance on a kid or you know get some transfers in here. That's not really how we wanted to build a program. So I think the progression of the program has been incremental and a little slower than you know I would like, but I think we're building it up with the right types of kids. Um, you had That's six really Bearcats that stepped up and took your challenge last year to win at least 20 matches. And, and, and as much as Tyler did well at 28 and six as a heavyweight, one of the toughest heavyweight classes in years, then McKeever came on strong as well. I mean, he had one great season. Yeah. He's another phenomenal success story in, in our program and what this program can produce. Again, Jack two years ago or three years ago was thrown in as a true freshman at 157, uh, won one varsity match, uh, against D one competition. And for him to turn around and win 25 plus matches last year and become an NCAA qualifier, that's, you know, a really exciting thing. And we're looking for, for better, be, bigger and better things this year from, from Jack. And and again, we'll have him as a probably I would say probably odds on favor for one of the team captains or or leadership roles on that team. You guys came on strong late. You had an eighteen sixteen win over Bucknell, then ranked number twenty two, and it was late in February. How how important was that Bucknell victory for you guys? I think it was huge. You know, um, you could talk about having those victories and what it takes to 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 what it takes to go in and do something that like that. But until you actually do it and prove that you can do it, um, it's a completely different animal. Um, but I think last year we need to build on the one thing we lacked a little bit last year. And we had a young nucleus of guys and continue. We're going to continue to uh, ride the backs of a really young squad this year. But the big challenge last year was getting consistency on a week in and week out uh, basis. And, you know, most notably that comes down to, I think we had six dual meets uh, come down to one takedown, not even one match. But if we could have turned, you know, one takedown either way into our advantage, we could have had six more dual meet wins. But that comes down to, again, being consistent as a team, you know, not only from a performance but an ex expectation standpoint. So that's really one thing we're preaching this year. Um, to our young guys is really embracing this process, being consistent, not not just in competition, but every day, how you live your life, how you're approaching your academics, how you're approaching your, your social life, how you're approaching practice, setting the highest standard possible in every one of those areas and consistently reaching that mark on a daily basis. And if we can do that, you know, and build some momentum day after day, you know, that's going to translate out on the mat this year, I believe. I believe you're absolutely right, and you're proving out that your theory and practice does work. I know we're going to be talking with uh, Kyle Borshoff a little later on today as we extend our coverage of the Binghamton University Bearcats, and the Bearcats are coming on strong. You do have a young, uh, young class this year, uh, but I think they're a very hungry class. If anything, these are a lot of uh, New York or Upper Northeast uh, area kids that have uh, you know some incredible experience behind them. I know you're strong as as I would expect you to be at the uh, at the smaller weights, but uh, over you know looking over your entire roster, this looks really good for the future, Coach. No, I'm excited. I mean, we're we're young, and I believe 25 of our 30 guys are in their first two years in the program. Um, so that's exciting. Um, it's exciting that you know we're, we've gotten to the point where everyone in the program has now. Um, come through our recruiting system. We recruited them with our philosophy, with our expectations. So, so they came in right away buying in and believing what they can achieve here. Um, so from a cultural standpoint, it's been really fun this, uh, since this summer when we got the boys in to see us really turning the, turning the corner from a cultural standpoint about who we want to be and what this program wants to become. So we're going to have, uh, with, with young guys, you always have some good moments, some bad moments, but you know, our job as a staff is to consistently get them back on the mark, get them back in the right direction, you know, um, and continue to build throughout the year and grow throughout the year. And if we can do that, you know, with the training system we have in place, I believe we can uh, be geared up to do some uh, pretty good things by the end of the year. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. 
You come from a wrestling family, knowing what it means to have brothers uh, that are in competition, feeding off each other. Uh, you've got a pair of brothers that uh, are on your coaching staff, but you also have a pair of brothers on the team. We do. We do. And that's, uh, you know, I've got a little bit of bias there. You know, <laughs> go, growing up in a uh, family of four brothers, you know, and what that meant, you know, to be with them and, and have this wrestling experience and go out and compete with them. Um, it's really special for me to have Jason and Kyle on staff. You know, this is a dream that they've had to, to at some point come together and coach. I know, you know, during my tenure at Penn State, having my brother Tim there and coach with him um, was one of those bucket list moments. Yeah. And I know that's a, the same thing uh, for Jason and Kyle. Um, they're loving this experience. Obviously, there's even a deeper connection for them because their dad was actually a, a, an alumni here in Russell for us. So they've got some deep-rooted connections with Binghamton. Uh, to have the Dupre brothers on staff, the twins, is good. Uh, they got a couple of younger ones on the road. They, they, they're very similar to my family, so I've got a deep connection to them because, you know, um, getting to know the boys, getting to know their family, you know, reminds me a lot of how I was raised with my brothers. And so it's um, really special to have those guys on the team, have Jason and Kyle on staff. And uh, it's just a great, fun, enjoyable environment to uh, come to work every day. You know, and it sounds uh, it sounds like you've got all the oars in the water, Coach. I appreciate the time that I know, and I promise you 15, but uh, when I start talking with you, it's hard for me to uh, to shut down the questions. I just enjoy our conversations as well. And I've got to believe that uh, when, you go, when you go into the homes of these parents and the kids, uh, uh, you know, I've got to believe you enjoy those conversations. You love what you do, don't you? I do. It's a passion. It's got to be a passion. I can't if you're just doing a job, you might as well hang it up. So it's got to be something you you uh, dream about at night and are fired up once you get out of bed in the morning. So well, I'm always fired up after I get done talking with you. Matt Durland's been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. We hope you enjoyed the experience again today, Matt. We want to wish you, your staff, and your squad uh, the very best as we, uh, well, we're just a couple weeks away from the beginning of the season, November 1st. It all kicks off in Atlanta, Georgia at the NWCA All-Star Classic, the 50th edition of that monster event. And, uh, gosh, for all of us, uh, it's, it's a moment we wait for, and then we really start going. You pretty excited, pretty fired up for the year? Yeah, I can't wait. Next week at Rutgers, so open up and uh, get a big-time test right out of the gate. So we're excited about that. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the results, Coach. And, again, thanks for the time that I appreciate the, uh, the setup. It worked out perfectly, and uh, it's always good to talk to you, Matt. No, good catching up with you, Scott, and thank you for, for you and everything you do for the sport. Our pleasure. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown Media. Our guest today, the head coach of the Bearcats of Binghamton University, Matt Dernlin. His tremendous tradition continues at Binghamton.